This episode of Creepy is presented by patrons Michelle Whitlock and Sammy Bidwee. This podcast is made possible by our patrons. Rewards for supporting the podcast range from early access to exclusive content. Please consider supporting this podcast by visiting patreon.com slash creepypod. This is Creepy, a podcast dedicated to sharing the most famous, chilling, and disturbing creepypastas and urban legends in the world. Whether these stories truly happened or are simply fabrications is for you to decide. These stories may contain graphic depictions of violence and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Creepy presents The Bad Days. Day 9. My Wife. My life seemed like it was going pretty well. I just received my bachelor's degree at the state college and received a fairly well-paying job as an office manager. The thing is, something felt like it was missing from my life. I wanted love. I wanted to have a wife to keep me company. But the only women I knew worked at the office and were drop-dead ugly. After coming home one evening from a long day at work, I grabbed a coke, sat down, and booted up my computer. I was very desperate to find love as soon as possible, and it seemed like my only choice was to find it through online dating. I visited a popular website, registered, and set up my interests in the hope that I'd be matched soon. The next morning, I woke up and turned the computer on once more. I noticed that there were only a total of two matches, and strangely enough, one of the two was a drop-dead ugly co-worker. The other had no profile picture, but the name was unfamiliar. Knowing how desperate I was, I took a chance and private messaged this girl, asking her to meet up at a local cafe that night. The person replied back about three minutes later saying okay. I was very excited, but at the same time anxious to see how this would go. That night I was bitterly exhausted from the tremendous amount of work I had at the office, but my excitement quickly overpowered it as I quickly got home, changed, and drove off to the cafe. The cafe was only a quick five minutes away from my house, so driving was no problem at all. I had no trouble parking. Soon enough, I was inside, ready to see my blind date. To my utter astonishment, the most beautiful girl I had ever seen in my life approached me. Her most prominent feature were her eyes. The most gorgeous gray eyes in the world. Hi, she said, smiling. I'm Christy. You must be David. I saw your picture online. I sure as heck didn't see yours, I said, and we shared a laugh. I could tell already we were meant to be. Our first date turned out great, and as it turned out, we did indeed have a lot in common. As I dropped her off at her shabby apartment building, we partook in our first kiss, and I left. At this point, I felt like the luckiest guy in the world, like nothing could go wrong now. Christy and I dated for only four months before I proposed to her, and she said yes with great excitement. Our wedding went like most, but there was a desolate turnout of people. The members of the audience included my mother, Christy's father, a couple of my closer co-workers, and a few of her close friends. She was just so wonderful, and I was so in love. That night, I lost my virginity with her. But luckily she didn't get pregnant because having a child this early in our marriage wouldn't be too good. I wasn't financially able to afford a honeymoon, but she thought it was alright. Being with each other was all that mattered. She was just so nice like that. In place of that, I helped her move her things into my humble home, 
where we'd be living together. Our life together was going by so nicely, and we were the perfect team. A few months later, I learned at work that one of the co-workers who attended my wedding, Kevin, was found dead, with cuts all over his body. It was unidentified who did this, or what happened. They told me they were going to medically examine him in a few days. This news really brought me down. And it made the headache I already had even worse. I'd been getting pretty bad headaches, which I presumed had been from overwork. I got home late last night, and it appeared Christy was already in bed. I wasn't very hungry, so I went to my room to join her. I immediately told her about my friend Kevin being found dead. But she sat up suddenly, looked at me, and smiled which was quite odd considering the situation, and said, Don't worry about it. He'll be fine. I wasn't sure whether to be surprised or relaxed at her tone, but given her sweet nature, I just ignored it and went to sleep. The following morning, I woke up sick, coughing very badly and feeling the urge to vomit. I stayed home from work, which was the only nice part about it. Beside the fact of Christy being so caring for me while I was in my need. I love you. Feel better. Were the relaxing words spoken to me every so often that day. As night fell, she silently joined me in bed and turned off the lights. About 30 minutes in, I was having trouble sleeping. I wrapped my arm around Christy in an attempt to hold her. But just then my hand froze. I just couldn't move. Her skin was cold as ice. Christy, are you alright? I asked, but she didn't respond. I turned her over to reveal my wife, but the most horrific way I could imagine her. I screamed as loud as I possibly could, shoved her away from me and bolted for the bathroom. What I saw was my Christie with her eyeballs missing, revealing bloodied sockets, skin vein covered and droopy, pale white skin. I wasn't sure about any other detail because my eyes were not fully adjusted to the darkness. I sat there and cried until I suppose I fell asleep. Surprisingly, I felt refreshed that morning but that quickly changed into fear as I remembered what I'd just seen. My vision was blurred and distorted, most likely due to my excessive amount of crying. I had to push on and overcome the fear I had about whatever I witnessed the night before. I opened the door slowly, making sure it didn't make a sound. As I slowly turned toward the bedroom, I noticed she wasn't there. I heard something coming from the kitchen, metal banging together. I rushed over to check out the scene where I saw my beautiful wife there, picking up pans she had dropped. As soon as she saw me, she dropped them again. What the hell happened last night? She asked, but she sounded more concerned than angry. I felt like I had to throw my guts up. And so I did. I lied. She took the bait, fortunately. Oh, well, feel better. She kissed me and went back to cooking up breakfast. My weekend wasn't starting off so great. I contemplated what I'd seen, what had just happened. I just couldn't explain it. I tried to think past it, like it would never happen again, but it did. It haunted my dreams, her lifeless body, her lack of eyes. But the worst part of my nightmares were what did it. Her body would just stand up like a marionette and put its face to mine, sending the odor of rotting flesh into my nostrils. There's no escape. It 
it whispered coldly, We'll be together forever. It grinned, showing her regular beautiful smile. That smile now sent shivers down my back. I thought I was losing my mind. I saw that thing everywhere. It was hiding behind a cubicle. It was lying down in the park. I was frantic to get away from it, but it just wouldn't stop. I wanted Christy, my Christy, the one I'm in love with, not that ghoul. I knew I needed it to end. The following day, I walked into my house and saw the body standing near the kitchen, slouched over like in my dreams. I didn't take a minute to think before grabbing it and shoving it into the oven, resisting its struggles. I closed the door, turned it on, and although it was painful, I was relieved. The oven began to shake violently and emitted screams that were so pain-filled and horrible to hear I ran out of the house. The pain-filled screams went on for another ten minutes or so, and by then my house was filled with a thick wall of black smoke. As I walked back in, the shaking and screaming stopped. The house felt dead, silent and eerie, like nothing else was alive in the world. I walked up to the oven to examine the remains, and what I pulled out destroyed me more than anything could have. What I beheld was Christy, my wife burned beyond return, but strangely her eyes were completely intact. I fell to my knees just staring. I couldn't believe this. I was there for 15 minutes, 30, as the police started showing up. They came in and picked me up, and of course arrested me for being on the scene of the crime. I was put into a room and questioned, but luckily I was able to get my way around their persistent questions. They concluded that I was a husband who got home from work, finding the charred remains of my once beloved wife. They told me everything was going to be okay, and that I'd need to rent a room at a hotel while they inspected. I knew it wasn't going to be alright. I knew what I had done. You know what's even worse? I still see her. It. Whatever. I killed her. I killed her. I killed her! I could never forgive myself. I ruined my life, her life, everyone's. I didn't want to go on. But here I am saying this. So... Since I wanted to try and go on through my insane depression, I attempted to go to work the next day. As I pulled in and approached the doors, I noticed there was a yellow caution tape in front, and a small note stuck on the door reading, Building has been condemned from operations until later notice due to chemical exposure creating hazardous working conditions. Signed the State Department of Health. I felt chills run down my spine as I read the note, not knowing what this would mean to me. I decided I needed to get this checked out. I got into my car and sped down the road straight to my doctor. I neared his office and threw the door open, revealing I was the only client there. A nurse escorted me in and I asked him if he could test my body for chemical intake. He said yes and agreed to do it. Shortly afterward, he diagnosed me with a disorder caused by the inhalation of that certain chemical. Trembling, I pleaded for him to read the side effects included with the inhalation. He read them to me. Effects of inhalation or ingestion involve migraines, vomiting, wariness, and is uniquely linked to strange patterns and effects occurring within the senses. Long-term exposure may result in brain damage, mental instability, and severe hallucinations. 
For more information, including pictures and videos of the stories told on this podcast, or to suggest stories for future episodes, please visit us at CreepyPod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or email us at creepypod at gmail.com. All stories told on this podcast can be found at creepypastawikia.com and are protected by a Creative Commons license. Some rights reserved unless otherwise stated. <laughs>